very much. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, thank you to the, to the organizer for uh, organizing this conference and, and for uh, allowing me to participate. So today I'm going to talk about uh, interaction resistant metals in multi-component Fermi systems, which is a, a work that I've done in collaboration with the Matteo Ferraretto and Massimo Capone, uh, which are from the condensed matter section of, uh, of CISA. So at first I would like to give you a take home message. So in case you get bored uh, during the rest of, the, of the, my talk, you already have something to, to take home. So if you have a, a model parameter lambda that you can tune and vary, and uh, in such a way that you, you jump from one insulator on the left, insulator A, a to another insulator, insulator B, then it's possible to have a metal in between. And it's the quasi-degeneracy of two different insulators that can result into, into the formation of a metal. So this, uh, this gives the outline of, uh, of what I will talk about. Uh, in the first part of my talk, uh, the insulator A will be a mot insulator and the insulator B will be an und insulator and the model will, will be an Abbard Kanamori uh, Hamiltonian. While in the second part of my talk, we will see the competition between a mot insulator, a different kind of mot insulator, and a bend insulator. So this is uh, the outline. And let's begin with the first part. Uh, so I know that uh, for sure you, you all know, but just uh, for the sake of clarity, I would like to remind what is a single band upper model. This is the Hamiltonian of a single band upper model. And you see that there is a kinetic, a kinetic term that favors hopping of particles between neighboring sites and an interaction terms, which penalizes double or triple occupations. And uh, uh, the well-known uh, phase transition that occurs in this model is the metal in mode transition. Uh, that means that uh, if you are at all filling, meaning that uh, the number of fermions is exactly equal to the number of lattice then at the low uh, values of uh, u over t, the kinetic term prevails and electrons are delocalized in the lattice, while at high value of u over t, electrons get localized and uh, the system is insulating in spite of the fact that the traditional band theory would predict a metallic behavior. But now we have a three band upper model and you see that the Hamiltonian is considerably more complex. And uh, on top of the uh, side index J and spin index uh, sigma, you have also an orbital index A, which runs from one to three, which are the bands in our, in our, uh, uh, in our system. And uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, interaction Hamiltonian is the one illustrated here. And uh, apart from the traditional uh, Coulomb repulsion U, there is also uh, the UNS exchange coupling J, which is responsible for the formation of uh, UNS rules, UNS rules that I will show in, in a while. So this is the, the schematic picture of the three bands, which can be imagined then as three parallel channels. And uh, uh, now let's turn to the interaction part. The interaction part can be rewritten here as shown uh, here in, on the right, in, in terms of some quantum numbers, nj, which is the number of fermions at site j, the local spin s and the local, um, the local angular momentum l. So s is uh, proportional to, is, is built in terms of Pauli matrices and lj is, is built in terms of the generators of the, the symmetry group O3. Um, so now we see the effect of this local uh, interaction Hamiltonian on the arrangement of electrons in, in, in each site. So here we have the three boxes, which are the three orbitals of site J, and we want to fill them with two electrons. And there are a lot of ways to do it. And for example, I show two of them. This is one way of doing it. This is another way of doing it. But if you do the math, you, you will discover that uh, there is an energy gap between them and the, and the one on the bottom is favored. And the energy gap is exactly proportional to, to J, which is the UNS and J exchange coupling. Another example in, in the case of three elections per site. So we want to put three elections in these boxes is the one shown here. So this is a possible configuration. This is another possible configuration. And we can see that there is a, an energy splitting between them. So one is favored, the other is disfavored. 
So in summary, we can say that the, uh, the und ex exchange coupling, J, favors local configuration having high spin and high orbital angular momentum. And these are exactly the Hund's rules that we studied in chemistry. So when you fill the generate orbitals with some electrons, they must be placed with, with parallel spin and occupying the maximum possible number of, of orbitals. So what about the mode transition in this system? The mode transition is not as simple as before. There is a whole, uh, let's say, zoology of, of, uh, of situation that I try to, to summarize it with these pictures. So the critical value of U over T at which the system undergoes the metal interest in insulator transition depends both de depends on the wounds and uh, on the wound coupling, and uh, depends also on the filling, so the number of electrons per site. So these are three examples. So a filling equal to one, equal to two, and equal to three. And Z is the quasi uh, quasi particle spectral spectral weight, which is the degree of metallicity. So Z, Z equal to one means perfect metal, Z equal to zero means insulator. So in the case of one electron per site, J favors the metallic state. You can see that increasing J, the critical value of U at which you, you have a mode transition is pushed on the right. So to very high values of U over T. Conversely, if you have half filling, so uh, three electrons per site, then J favors an insulating state because the critical U is pushed to very, to very low value of U over T. So it's pushed to the left. In between, so when, uh, when uh, the filling is two, that, that will be our case, uh, the filling will have, uh, <coughs> uh, the, the, the J will, uh, will, uh, will play a Janus phase role. That means that on one end, J will push the critical value of U on the to the right, so to high values. On the other end, uh, uh, J will spoil the metallicity at small values of U over T. So this is called the Janus effect. And uh, in, the, in the next of my talk, let's say in the, in, the, in the following part, I will want to clarify the mechanism behind the existence of metallic solution in the presence of large values of U and J. So in spite of the fact that U and J tend to, co to constrain electron mobility, I will, I will show you that instead you will have a nice metal. And to do it, I will consider uh, the, our model Hamiltonian on the most, on the simplest possible system, non-trivial circuit that you can build. That means a three-side system with periodic boundary condition. You can look at it uh, as the simplest circuit that you can realize. So let's focus uh, on the atomic limit, so t equal to zero for the moment. And if over j, uh, if j over u is small then the system is, an, is in a mode insulating state. That means exactly two electrons per site. And that this is the energy. Uh, and even if you switch on the tunneling, a little tunneling, then hopping processes are suppressed not to pay the cost of triply occupied steps, of triply occupied sites. So you don't want to create triple occupations because U is very large. So now we consider another limit. J over U is very large. In this case, the system is in a und insulating, und insulating state. And this is a disproportionated insulator. That means that different sides host a different number of, uh, of electrons. Uh, this is the, the energy of this configuration. And the, it, when you switch on the tunneling, hopping processes are suppressed, not to pay the cost of uh, locally violating und's rules. So not to lose the high spin and the, and the high angular momentum of these configurations. And if you plot the energy of these two atomic limits, so the blue line and the red line, and you compare it with the exact numerical, uh, um, with the energy of uh, computed by means of the exact numerical diagonalization of the system, then you see that uh, uh, you have a degeneracy at j over u equal to one third. So in, in, at this value, j over u equal to one third, the two insulators are degenerate. And that's, this is, uh, this is the point which, uh, which host interaction resilient metallicity. Um, so to provide you with another point of view, uh, here I show you the, the local population, the local population. So you, you, you can imagine to project your many body wave function, psi zero, over a local configuration having n number of fermions with the spin s. And you measure the, the amplitude, the, the probability of, uh, of finding such a configuration. 
So you can see on the left that for sure you will find the two electrons per lattice size because we are in a molten insulating state. While on the, on the right, you have uh, uh, one third population in, for n equal to zero and two thirds of population for the purple line. That means n equal to three. And this is the Holmes insulator. So the disproportionated insulator that I was mentioning before. And in the, uh, what happens in, in, in between, so at uh, j over u is equal to one third, is that various atomic multiplets are populated. And this is another key to, to observe the emergence of Hund's, uh, Hund's metallicity. Yes, if you compute the, if you, if you look at this as a probability distribution, because they are practically normalized to one, you can, you can see that the maximum of this, uh, uh, the maximum entropy of this probability distribution is at j over u equal to one third. And this is exactly the, uh, the point where uh, Hund's metallicity arises. So uh, now I show you how to probe the conduction properties of, of our unknown system. So classically, if you want to, me to measure the resistance of something, you apply a voltage and you measure the current. So in my case, I'm doing something very similar conceptually. So I, I have my, sm my small circuit, the trimer, with periodic boundary condition, and I have a wave function, the, the blue donut. And I want to know if it is conductive or, or insulating. So what I do is simply to rotate the circuit around its axis and to measure the current, which may flow or may not flow, depending if it is metallic or insulating. So to be more formal, I switch on a pair space proportional to E, uh, proportional to phi. And I define the current, uh, the associated current oper operator, which is simply the derivative of, of the Hamiltonian with respect to the applied flux. And, uh, and I measure the expectation value of this operator in the, in the ground state of the system. So this is the result that, uh, that, uh, that I find. And uh, on the horizontal axis, there is the interaction U. And on the vertical axis, there is the Unz exchange coupling. And this is the current. Uh, you, you know, this current is proportional to the, to the degree of metallicity of the system that is also known as drew the weight or the singular part of the DC electrical conductivity or to the quasi particle spectral weight Z. So different communities call these objects in, in different ways. You can see that there are two big uh, blue plateaus, two big blue seas. This, this one is the MOT insulator, uh, high U, uh, small values of J. And this other is the Yunz insulator, uh, so high value of J. But in between, you see the current uh, along this red line, J over U is equal to one third, is, that, uh, uh, is where you have persistent metallicity. Another way to look at this uh, phenomena is uh, through the, uh, the analysis of the many body spectrum of the system. So I take the, the Hamiltonian and I find the, the first uh, 4,000 energy levels. And you can see that uh, uh, you can recognize some bundles, some uh, branches of uh, energy, le energy levels. And now I show you in detail something. Uh, so let's focus on the, on the left part, uh, small values of J over U. Here it's uh, uh, the bundle of states corresponding to, to this configuration. If you, then the first excited band is the one where you start violating Hund's rules. So you no longer have a high spin and high orbital angular momentum, but you start flipping locally the spins. And then again, the, the following uh, bundle is a, is a bundle where you start flipping another uh, local configuration. And then only later, only at more, uh, at, only at higher energies, you find the, the occurrence <coughs> of charge excitation. So here you are start breaking uh, your insulator at high energies. Uh, conversely, on the, on the other side, for, uh, for high values of J over U, uh, you have uh, uh, the first band is the one uh, uh, representing the Hund's insulator. The first excited band is the one who already host uh, charge excitation. So you, you are breaking your insulator and you are forming a metal. And interestingly, uh, you can uh, compute the energy gap of the charge excitation on one side and on the other side. And you can see that the charge gap collapses on both sides exactly at j over u equal to one third. So this is a very nice and simple way to, to look uh, at the breaking down of the insulators and the emergence of, of, of metals. And these uh, properties of the many body spectrum is of course mirrored by the, by the finite temperature properties. 
So here we have the, the specific heat of the system. Um, so first of all, I compute the, the thermal expectation value of the energy, and then I compute the specific heat. And you know that the, at, if you fix uh, if you if you fix j over u, you have a function. So the specific heat uh, is a function of temperature, and this function has peaks exactly when a class of excitation uh, unfreezes, so it gets active. So this is our thermometer, let's say, in logarithmic scale. And we are walking along this red line, so at fixed j over u. And we see that, uh, OK, as very small values of temperature, then you have practically the ground state. Then you find the first uh, peak in the specific heat. And this corresponds to a loss of intersite correlation. Then if you further increase temperature, you start violating Kuhn's rules, so flipping of local spins. And then only at high temperature, you see the onset of charge excitations. Um, so now let's comment something about charge correlators, which is something that uh, mean field or the mean field methods techniques cannot capture. So I want to, to find the charge correlation between site E and site J. Um, and uh, of course, I can distinguish between the intraorbital and interorbital contribution, which are defined uh, here in the bottom of this slide. And uh, uh, what we observe from, from the plot is that the total charge fluctuation are, of course, zero in the mode insulating state. But uh, <clears throat> the total charge fluctuation increase with J over U, but they are not maximal in the Unz metal region. They are maximal in the Unz, uh, they are maximal in the Unz insulator region because of its uh, disproportionated nature. So we find a counterintuitive uh, uh, phenomenon for which uh, a charge, uh, charge excitation are stronger in an insulator than in a metal. And this is uh, uh, an, another, another plot, which is uh, uh, the plot about first neighbor charge correlations. And you can see that, uh, uh, again, the total charge correlation are zero in the most insulating state. Uh, they increase in, in absolute value, uh, increasing J over U. And uh, again, uh, they are stronger in, uh, in the Unz insulator uh, phase rather than in the Unz uh, metal, which is something a little bit uh, uh, counterintuitive. Um, OK, now let's move to a second part, which is, which is more based on ultra-cold atoms. Um, and I will talk about the, an SU3 Hubbard model with patterned potential. So do you know what is this? Any idea about it? Yeah, Angelo, uh, Adriano, uh, so barnacles. A, a little hint. This is the position on on the periodic table. This is strontium. This is a chemical element uh, which is very useful for what I will describe. So it's an alkaline heart metal. And we like it because uh, the electron in, in, this, in this element, the electronic orbitals, uh, degrees of freedom, are, and the nuclear spin uh, are decoupled. So these, uh, these uh, strontium atoms can be prepared in such a way to, to, to obey, let's say, the symmetry SON, where uh, N is 2i plus 1, and I is the nuclear spin of strontium, which uh, uh, I show you in, in a while. Um, so in the, in the case of strontium, I is equal to nine, uh, nine halves. And so this gives us uh, with the 10 possible different flavors that you can see depicted here. So different colors of fermions that can be uh, obtained. And of course, you can work uh, just with a subset of them. But in principle, you are offered with the 10 of them. Um, so this is the Hamiltonian that, that is offered by this system. and uh, what, what does it mean that the Hamiltonian is SUN symmetric? It means that uh, all parameters in the Hamiltonian, so the hopping T, the Hubbard repulsion U, and the, and the possible presence of uh, confining potential mu, are uh, uh, independent on the flavor index. So they just they do not depend on the color of, of this fermion. So as I, as I was saying, uh, uh, strontium offers with 10 possible uh, flavors, but it's not the only element that can be used to, to build SUN symmetric uh, 
system. So Interbium offers six flavors and Lithium offers three flavors. And these are some references about experiments when where these things are done uh, in practice. Um, so now I will focus on a, on a system, on an SU3 uh, system, which has a, a super lattice, so a patterned potential, which makes uh, some lattice deeper and some lattice shallower. So in the case of mu j, mu j equal to zero, so not, no super lattice, I have just a regular lattice, and uh, in the limit of strong interaction, so u, u over t much, uh, much bigger than one, and filling uh, n equal to, to, to two, um, a mot insulator is stabilized. So you have two fermions per lattice side, very simple. Then we focus on another limit, uh, the limit in which you have a strong super lattice. So there are uh, uh, shallower, uh, shallower sides and deeper sides. And the pattern is uh, minus mu, zero, minus mu, minus mu, zero, minus mu. This is the building block of the, of the super lattice. And you can see that the fermions gather and, and are packed in, uh, in the deeper sides, so uh, the, the one having lowest energy. And in this case, you practically have a, a band insulator because you are, you are, you are filled with whatever is possible. And so this is a, like, let's say a trivial insulator. So in this case, uh, in the first case, you have no super lattice and the particle hoppings are suppressed due to, due to you. And so you have a mot insulator. In this other case, you have a strong super lattice and particle hoppings are suppressed um, due, to, due to mu. In, the, in, in between, you have a, a, an intermediate phase, which, is, uh, which uh, emerges in the presence of a mild super lattice. And particle hoppings are possible only between pairs of deep sides. So it means that shallower sides always host one fermion. And you have a residual kinetic energy between pairs of neighboring deep sides. But what is interesting is what is, find, uh, what is found in between. So along these red lines, you have inter interaction resilient metals. So when the first configuration is, is degenerate with the second, or the second is degenerate with the third, then let's say everything is allowed. And you have uh, the presence of an interaction resilient metal. Um, and you see that uh, if you compute the energy of this configuration, they turn the generate at mu over u equal to one and at mu over u equal to two. Um, so again, to probe the conduction properties of this, uh, of this uh, system, let's say I, I use the same technique that I used before. I rotate the, the circuit around its axis and I measure the current. And this is the result. So uh, along X, you have uh, along the horizontal axis you have uh, U, and along the vertical axis you have the depth of the of the super lattice, and you you can recognize uh, uh, three plateaus here uh, on the bottom right. You have the mot insulator. On the upper left corner you have a band insulator. Here in the center you have this strange intermediate phase where kinetic energy is dimerized, so it is localized between pairs of of deep sides. But along the two red lines, mu over u equal to one and mu over u equal to two, then here you have interaction resilient metallicity. Again, this, this can be understood from uh, looking at the evolution of local configuration with weight. Uh, uh, so computing the, the weight, the, the, the probability of local configuration having nj number of fermions. And uh, what you find is that uh, here, at mu over u equal to one, these two configurations are degenerate and uh, there are sites with one, two and three fermions which are connected by hopping processes. Similarly, on the, other, uh, on the other transition line, so mu over two equal to two, degenerate and so you are offered with all possible configurations. So both zero, one, two and three are uh, uh, all active at the same time and this is what uh, offers the possibility of conduction. So with this, I come to, to the conclusion, let's say, of my, of my talk. Um, in the first part, I've, we have, so, we have uh, I tried to explain that uh, uh, a metal arises from the competition between a mot and a non insulator. And this competition, uh, uh, so these two terms, sorry, these two terms, which both constrain electromobility, results in, in a metal. In general, of course, if you want to probe the conduction property of the system, you, you can build a minimal circuit. 
and rotate it and measure uh, the current, also known as through the weight. Well, in the second part of, uh, of my talk, I tried to emulate this kind of physics by means of a, a platform of ultra cold atoms with SU3 symmetry and a super lattice. And uh, by creating deeper sites and, uh, and uh, shallower sites, I created the possibility to, uh, uh, I, I let these two, uh, let's say, opposite tendency compete. And the result uh, is uh, uh, an interaction resilient metals as well. So uh, with this, I, I, I hope I finished and I uh, thank you for, for your attention. Thanks, Andrea, for this interesting talk. I think that we have enough time for some questions, comments. So I have a question. I'm sure you explained yes. it, but in the very first slide, you said it's uh, the, I mean, in the take home message, you said that it's because of the quasi degeneracy between the two kinds of insulators. And yes. Somehow I don't understand this quasi degeneracy. Like, uh, well, in the, in the, if you switch on the tunneling, uh, you don't have a, an atomic limit anymore. So you cannot really talk about uh, atomic insulators. And you, so I, I show you this slide that maybe helps. A second. So here you see, uh, if you look at the blue line and the red line, these are the energies of the atomic insulators, and they are really degenerate at j over u equal to one third. But if you consider the yellow line, that is the exonumerical diagonalization of the system in the presence of hopping, then uh, of course uh, you you don't have a degeneracy. You have a degeneracy of what was the original uh, of of you have a degeneracy of the corresponding atomic limit. I okay, hope this answers. Okay. No, no, I, I get it. Thanks. I think there is a, another question from Pierre. Yes, so I suppose it's somehow related to this point. So what bothers me a bit is that mm -hmm. it feels like uh, what you call um, interaction resilient metal yes. is the um, phase transition between the MOT insulator and the other insulator or more generally two insulators. Exactly. But, but when, when, when we call something a, a metal, we, we think of a phase and this is more fine tuning than a phase. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's the border between two phases, but uh, in the presence of a finite hopping, in the presence of a finite hopping, you don't have a line, you have a stripe. So because of, because of the presence of a, of, a, of a tunneling, here the, the interaction resilient metal is not on a line, on the red line, is on a stripe centered uh, about this line, whose width is proportional to the tunneling. But, but so I don't understand, like the, the MOT insulator and uh, the other one was the Hubbard who, insulator. Who, Hund insulator, yes. Yeah, the, are there, uh, when including the, the hopping, are they the same phase or are they separated by a phase transition? They are, of course, separated by a phase transition. But so, so it means that, uh, strictly speaking, mm -hmm. really your metal, your interaction resilient metal is really on the, on the, Phase transition is just because you have a finite size or because you have a... No, no, it's not because you have a finite size. This, uh, this uh, metal is present also in the thermodynamic limit. Okay, but I mean, th these are effect of the vicinity of the phase transition. They are not, yes. they are not yes. like properties of the phase. Uh, because I mean, it's, some, it's a matter of terminology, I guess. Sorry? It, I think it's a matter of terminology. So oh, I, I suppose it is, but uh, usually uh, what it, I mean, for, from my understanding, what it means for actual uh, physical systems is that um, it's especially a solid state system. It's difficult to have a fine tuning because mm -hmm. you will have uh, di some disorder, some imperfections. And so what really matters is the property of a phase and not non-universal properties like what happens close to a fine tuning. And so doesn't that mean that 
in terms of, um, let's say, uh, technological potency, it is less, uh, it, it, it will be less, uh, less used as a consequence. I, I don't think this, this comp I'm, I'm, let's say I'm not an expert of material science, but I think that this concept of Wundt's metal is rather, rather, um, okay. rather robust in the, in, the, in, the, in the community of solid state physics. Okay. Okay. And uh, as I said, it's not specific of the line J over U equal to one third, but it's enough to have a finite, a finite tunneling to allow you to have a persistent metal. Mm -hmm. It's not something that disappears in the thermodynamic limit. No, no, okay, okay. I, sorry, maybe I don't get fully your question. No, maybe no, but I think- We can uh, discuss later. I think that uh, answers the question uh, in any case. Thank you very much. Okay, if there is another question from Giuliano, please, Giuliano. Thank you, hi. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to ask, um, so if you look at the current along this uh, J over U equal one third line, yes. uh, like yes. how, it, how does it decrease with the U over T? Because I guess like it decreases when you increase the interaction, no? So like what's uh, the profile along the line? Well, no, no, actually it is an, uh, an, as, an asymptote. Oh, okay. It's an asymptote. So you, in, 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 in theory, you should have, uh, you should have uh, uh, metallicity even in the presence of infinite U and infinite, mu and infinite J. This is the, the, the thing which is uh, amazing of Wundt's metals. Okay. That even if U and J are incredibly large you have a metal mm -hmm. provided um, that you have provided that you have a finite tunneling uh, i mean u over t going to infinity is equal to finite tunneling to zero tunneling right yes okay but in practice you never have uh, u over t equal okay. to infinity. you have 1000 but uh, not infinite okay and just out of curiosity what's the this asymptotic value like uh what is it like compared to the maximum current? Sorry, can, can you repeat? Uh, so like the asymptotic value to which the, the current goes compared to the maximum current you have on, uh, yes. uh, on your bar? Like it's, a bit, it's around 0 0.3, if I'm not wrong. Okay. So one third of the, of the conductivity that you had uh, in the, let's say, non-interacting uh, system, which is not bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, okay. Okay, I think there is a, a question from the audience from Vladan Selebonovic. Uh, did you apply your calculation to any real <laughs> materials? No, unfortunately not. Uh, but I can I can mention the a previous work from uh, from my group that I, I was not part of it here on uh, on uh, on the right. Here on the right, you see this is a. Uh, mm, let's say a similar phase diagram uh, with respect to the one that I plotted for a finite system. So my colleagues obtained it uh, with the dynamical mean field theory. So in the limit of infinite dimension and beta lattice. So um, you can see that, uh, uh, I mean, this is more quantitative, this is more representative of a real material with respect to, to my simulation that was referred to, to, a simplest, uh, to the simplest circuit. Okay, perfect. So there is another, uh, another question from Aritra. Uh, hi. Uh, so I think it is already asked, but uh, like, uh, like this, the, the, the root rate that you get, the, like, is it a thermodynamic limit result or is it the finite size result? Can you speak? Sorry, can you speak louder? Because I, I hear very, yeah. I hear you very bad. I don't know if the other uh, people okay. hear you well. For, for the for the bit, uh, is it the infinite size? Uh, is the thermodynamic result or is it the finite size result that you get in the for the metallicity? Sorry, can can you repeat your question? I, I didn't hear you. Can I can, say the can you hear clearly? So yes, th thank you. For the root weight, yes. is it in the thermodynamic limit that you calculate or for the finite system? For it's the finite the system, the root finite weight is system. done for a finite system. So the minimal circuit that you can imagine. Okay. And, and it, does it depend on the, on, on the system size? 
Yes, in principle, it depends. If you if you increase if you increase the the number of lattice sites, so if, for example, if you consider a ring with four, five, or six sites, you will see that this Duda weight converges to the to an asymptotic value, which is represented here in this slide on the red. Okay. And, and but I wanted you know to show it... you the minimal circuit. I mean, uh, the, tri the trimer is the okay. most essential uh, circuit that allows you to understand the, the, the ingredients of the physics. OK, OK, thanks. I think there is another question from Pierre. Actually, there was also a question from Adriano, but it's just that he raises his hand ah, in sorry. real life and not virtually. So. Okay, so, so maybe let's, Adriano. Let, let's do him first because it's twice that he gets uh, his turn. Yeah, yeah. And then, then I'll be glad to, to ask you. So uh, I wanted to ask you this. Uh, if I recall the phase diagram of the 1D Hubbard model, just single band, the easiest thing you can think yes. about. Um, tuning your filling, the number yes. of fermions that you have in the system, you can actually have different kinds of insulators. You have a MOT insulator without filling, and then if you tune the filling up some more, you have um, a metallic phase where conduction is non-zero until yes. you get to a band insulating phase where every side is doubly filled, and then you don't conduct anymore. Yes. And in that case, you actually have um, <clears throat> a conducting phase between insulators because it's simply the equivalent after you apply the particle hole symmetry of the metallic phase that you would have to, between an empty lattice and a MOT insulator. Sure, definitely, so, definitely. Can, so can you interpret your results as in the 1D case? So it's the equivalent of what you will get in another, let's say, more simple and more basic to understand metallic phase, just in terms maybe of a more complicated symmetry because there are three bands involved. I would say no, because in the example that you did, which is perfectly, perfectly correct, in my opinion, you are varying the filling. So you are varying the number of carriers in, in, uh, in, the, in the lattice. And on top of mm. that, you are violating the commensurability condition. So if you basically, if you want to make a MOT insulator, a MOT insulator you need to have a commensurate number of particles. Of course, if you have a, a non-commensurate number of particles, you are somehow cheating. I mean, you can have an, an, a huge interaction you, but you will never have a MOT insulator. There is nothing which stabilizes it. In my case, the situation is different because I'm not varying the number of particles, and I, I am, that's why I'm always allowing the system to form a MOT insulator. So the U is very large, the number mm. of particles is always commensurate. The system is expected to undergo MOT localization, but it doesn't because of the other terms that uh, um, determine the competition between different uh, tendencies. So you're not making holes by taking away particles from a band insulator. You're making holes by making, say, the band insulator less convenient. So particles want to do another kind of insulator, and there are some that are left around to conduct. This exactly. Is exactly. OK. Thank you. Please, Pierre, go ahead with your question. So I suppose it goes also uh, in the same direction. My question is. To what extent would you say that this uh, this existence of um, interaction resilient uh, metal regime exists next to any uh, MOT uh, insulator phase transition? Well, uh, if you if you have a regular MOT insulator phase, uh, if you have a regular metal MOT insulator phase transition, you have on one side a metal, on the other side you have an insulator. Okay. So there is there is no concept. Uh, of interaction resilient metal. To, yes. If I understood your question. So between, of course, two two isolating phase, one being a MOT insulator. Well, can you make an example of another transition between? Uh... So, I mean, a lot of uh, insulating topological phases uh -huh. next to a MOT insulating uh, phases. This I don't know. I, I, mean, uh, I mean, I mean, I cannot answer your question. I don't know if it is a gen. Okay, so the question, the, the answer is I don't know if it is a general concept. But it is provided by the simultaneous present uh, presence of different number of fermions uh, at different sites. This is the basic condition which allows you to have uh, uh, 
um, to have a persistent metallicity. So it's not enough for two insulators to be degenerate, but the degenerate degeneracy must be in such a way that different uh, sites host different number of fermions that are connected by hopping. And that's why you have a metal. Okay. But in general, if uh, on, on one end you have uh, one kind of, inf of, of insulator, on the other end you have another kind of insulator, but the connection which, uh, the, the, the state which links them is not connected by, by hopping. The, the local configurations are not connected by hopping, then you cannot expect a, a, an interaction resilient method. Okay. To, to my knowledge, I okay. say this is my so, answer. So for example, between a charge density wave and a MOT insulator, you would expect this? You would yes. Expect, uh, but not between, uh, I don't know, a charge density wave uh, phase and a spin density wave phase, something like this. Exactly, exactly. Or for example, if you, uh, if, yes, 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 I cannot make a, a better example, yes. Okay, thanks. Other questions? I have a very trivial and stupid question. In this figure that you show, what is this white or gray region? I mean, I'm just trying to understand why there uh, is did, this. Uh, in, this, in this gray region, uh, there is another another effect which uh, which I'm not an expert of. So there is the so, so this is actually can uh, is an answer to Pierre's question. This is another insulator. This is another kind of insulator, uh, and you can see uh, Pierre that uh, um, there is no um, so in the gray in the gray area. Uh, this, we have another insulator that is neighboring to the blue area, which is the Huns insulator. So here in between, there is no interaction resilient method because the two configuration, the gray one and the blue one are not connected by hopping. So, the, so to, to, answer, to answer a Shadra, Shadra question, here we have another kind of insulator, which is due to the fact that you want to maximize this, the local spin and the local, uh, and the local angular momentum. So the local configuration uh, change arrangement and the uh, uh, fermions get packed in, in, a, in a different way. Okay, thanks. So just to like again conclude, it's not really true that any kind of two insulators will have one metallic transition in between. For example, between this gray and blue region, there no, is- No, 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 it's not a general statement at all. Okay, okay. Uh, Here in the take home message I wrote, uh, I wrote that uh, can result into a method. Yeah. It's not for sure. Okay, thank you. There are specific conditions to, to, let's say, to, to meet if you want this to be true. Thanks. Other questions? Okay. Not uh, let me thank again all the speakers of this morning session, Shada, Manuela, and Andrea for the very interesting talks. So I think that uh, in 15 minutes we have uh, the, um, the photo session. <coughs> so we can recombine the new Zoom link, I think. Yeah, the, everybody should have received an email with a separate Zoom link. It's not the same as this one. The rules are a bit different. I think everybody will will be visible so that we can actually take the picture. So we can meet there at 12. The machinery should be in place uh, so we can actually take the photo and then we can go for lunch. In the meantime, maybe we can have a snack before. I'm sure many of you are starving as I am. Yes, but don't hesitate to try to connect a bit earlier, even if we only take the photo after 12, just because this way we, we know when everybody is here and, uh, and available so that it will get uh, quicker this way. Perfect. Yes. See you later. Yes. See you. See you. See you very soon.
So among the spectators that are still there, do you all have the have the link for the for the photo? If uh, if not, send me a message and I give you the link. So I'm receiving no message, so I did use that everybody has the, the link for the photo. So I see a thanks, but I don't know if it's a thanks, please send me the link or a thanks, uh, I have the link. <laughs> All right, I guess everybody has a link. So see you in the, in the photo session uh, right now. <laughs>